Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. 18-year-old Thomas Brown was a big fish in the little town of Canadian, Texas. He was a two-time state football champion and class president at his high school with lots of friends. On November 23rd, 2016, the night before Thanksgiving, Thomas met up with some friends and was seen later that evening filling up his car with gas. But when he missed curfew and he wasn't answering his phone, his family became worried and they called the sheriff's office. Thomas's car was eventually located near a water treatment plant, but he was nowhere to be found. Investigators say they found a tiny drop of blood inside the car, but other than that, no leads. Then, in January of 2019, human remains were found and positively identified as Thomas. A few months later, in August, the Texas Attorney General's office suspended the investigation into his death, claiming that there was no viable evidence regarding foul play in Thomas's death. But the family and private investigators disagree and say Thomas was murdered. Let's take a look back at the case of a popular high school student whose death continues to be a mystery. Everyone in this small Texas town knows about Thomas Brown. There's not one person in this community that doesn't think about this. After more than a year of investigations and searches, the mystery surrounding the six foot senior class president's disappearance has only deepened. My theory personally is that he was taken by force by whom I don't know. You believe he was murdered? Yes, I do. By someone he knew? I I believe so, yes. With few clues uncovered and key evidence kept concealed. The case does not need to be open to the public. A community is left living in fear and a mother is left frustrated. At this point, I know more about the Las Vegas shooter than I do about my own son and his disappearance. When the class of 2017 graduated from Canadian High School, they left an empty seat for the class president. At this time, please pause with us as we acknowledge Thomas Brown. Instead of a diploma and a round of applause. As we continue to hold that hope that Tom will come back to us. For Thomas Brown, there was a moment of silence. In my mind, I always talk about him in present tense, as if he is still here. It's hard, but because I don't have anything conclusive that tells me that he's not alive, um, that's how I'm going to talk about him until I know for sure. But Penny Meek hasn't seen her son for more than a year. It was the night before Thanksgiving. Thomas was going out for the night. His brother Tucker was home visiting from college. I said, what are you doing You know, when you get home? Let's watch a movie or something, because that's, that's what we did. Thomas agreed, then headed out to meet friends Christian Webb and Caleb King. Like most small towns, there isn't much for teens to do at night in Canadian Texas. We just rode around and listened to music pretty much all night talking. It was pretty just boring night in Canadian. We went out to the wagon bridge and walked around, uh, walked to one end and back. A little after 11, they were ready to call it a night. So Christian headed back to the middle school where the boys had parked their cars. What was the final words from Thomas that night? We made plans to go out to Christian's Thanksgiving night. Those were the final parting words, so I'll see you tomorrow. According to the county sheriff, at 1126, a school security camera captures Thomas pulling out the parking lot in his red Dodge Durango. He heads west for about a half mile, then stops for gas on 2nd Street, where he fills up with his mom's debit card. I have a schoolmate who came by the house a day or two later and said that he saw him getting gas there. A half hour later, Penny knew something was wrong. Thomas never misses curfew. And that's when my mom came in and said, have you heard from Tom? And I said, no, not in in a couple hours. Then something even more out of character. I had texted him, his brother had texted him, and he didn't respond. His messages showed as read, but no response. Minutes later, their texts stopped going through. I said, there's no way your brother would turn his phone off. So Penny and Tucker take off in separate vehicles to search. About an hour later, she called his friends. No one knew where he could be. She then called the sheriff's department. It was nothing out of the ordinary that night uh, when we didn't have a 
senior in high school, 18 year old, not show up on curfew. Thomas wasn't an average high school senior. He was elected class president two years in a row and one of the most popular kids on campus. He had lots of different friends, lots of different varieties of people that he hung out with. I mean, everybody liked him. And from sports to theater, he did it all. He had played football throughout high school on two state championship football teams. He was very involved in theater, always had a very good supporting role in their fall production, and he had just gotten into 4-H speaking. He finished 10th in the state. You must have been so proud. Oh, yes. But on Thanksgiving morning, Thomas's proud mom just wanted him home by sunrise. They'd driven nearly every street in Canadian. Soon, the search was airborne. We flew around the train tracks, flew around Lake Marvin. Christian's dad owns a helicopter business. She scoured the ground while he piloted the chopper. When they reached the eastern edge of town, Christian spotted the red SUV parked under some trees. My dad and I were trying to see if Thomas was in there. Uh, he kind of shielded me away because he didn't want me to see what was in the car just in case. But inside the SUV, there was no trace of Thomas. And it was found right here directly where I am, I am parked with my vehicle. Shortly after it was spotted from the air, deputies on the ground had it surrounded. The truck had been abandoned on a dirt road that leads to a water treatment facility. A window was down and the doors unlocked. No sign of a conflict, an assault, an abduction, nothing, nothing to suggest any of that. In a town with no murder rate, many thought the same thing. Within minutes after the car was found, my husband received a call from the sheriff saying that they believe Thomas committed suicide. Was that along the thought process of maybe this was a suicide? You know, I don't really, we haven't really discussed suicide that much. The family said at one point you said perhaps it's suicide. I have never said it was suicide, never have. But at the time, Hempville County Sheriff Nathan Lewis did tell the Canadian record the teen, quote, could be suicidal. However, that soon seemed unlikely. You know, most suicide victims want to be found. And despite days and weeks searching, Thomas Brown wasn't found. The water treatment plant was drained. The nearby 63-acre Lake Marvin sonared and the Canadian River searched into Oklahoma. Every search came up empty. Then finally, a clue. I couldn't tell you how the, how the backpack got there. Two months after the truck was found abandoned, Thomas's backpack was spotted by an oil worker about four miles away. I'd say six to eight feet behind this tree here, uh, behind the sign on the fence. It was on the other side of a barbed wire fence along the road that leads to Lake Marvin. It had to have been placed there after the fact because they searched that area. They searched it up and down uh, that day and, and, and days after. Sheriff Lewis believes it had been there a while. It had a uh, indention in the ground where the backpack was sitting. It was wet inside and out. Uh, pages were almost molded at that point. Thomas's school-issued laptop was still inside but hadn't been used. And because of the bag's condition, it didn't provide any clues. And his cell phone? Uh, we did not find his cell phone. What do you think happened? I believe whatever happened happened at the gas station. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then beyond that, I just, I don't have a clue. But more than a year after he disappeared, Penny Meek and detectives believe someone in their town does know. Someone knows something. Up next, is there a killer in Canadian? The search for Thomas leaves people living in fear. It makes going home very difficult because I don't feel safe. Plus, security video of what's believed to be Thomas's red Dodge Durango driven all over town in the hours after he went missing. But who's behind the wheel? I can't get any answers. Just two months on the job, Sheriff Nathan Lewis of Hemp Hill County faced what would soon become the most mysterious case of his career. It was very strange. He's talking about the disappearance of Thomas Brown, the senior class president missing since Thanksgiving Day 2016. After a night out with friends, he stopped for gas, then vanished. Or did he? We observed a 
similar vehicle, uh, the same type, make and model of the vehicle Tom Brown was in throughout the night in Canadian. This video shows several of those sightings. It's from the Abraham Trading Company at the corner of 2nd Street in Maine, about a half mile from where Thomas filled up around 11.30 that night. 90 minutes later, a red SUV similar to his Dodge Durango goes by for the first time. Do you think that was Tom driving? I can't be for sure. We could not see who was in the vehicle. Did it look like just one person in the car? Couldn't tell with the, with the camera view, the camera angles, the lighting. When Thomas missed his midnight curfew, the family went out searching. At one point on the video, the mystery red truck goes by. Then nine minutes later, Thomas's brother Tucker passes, heading in the same direction. Despite the close encounter, their paths never cross. Did you figure out a destination? It was just random all through the night. Then just before 6 a.m. on the edge of town, a camera at the county's recreational complex shows the red truck turn into a dirt road, which leads to a water treatment facility. Two hours later, it's where Christian Webb spotted Thomas's SUV from the air. That's to me when I realized something was wrong and that someone had to have played a part in his disappearance. That's because Christian says she never knew that road or water treatment facility existed. Penny Meek doesn't believe her son Thomas did either. Just right over the hill is, is residential houses. Uh, and you notice coming into the place, uh, we had all of our pavilion recreational area. Uh, you know, it's, it's just right here on the edge of town. That is a remote area. I don't believe that he had ever been to that location. So what's the connection in your mind when you found his car there? that somebody else drove it there or somebody made him drive it there. And she believes that person is no stranger to Canadian. Because of the location of the car, it leads me to believe that somebody from Canadian left it there. Um, not everybody knows where that's at. Do you think someone in Canadian knows what happened? Oh, I believe there are people in Canadian who know what happened. Do you think you know those people? I think I know some of them, yes. Canadian has about 2,500 people living here all over. You'll see signs like this, gone, where is Thomas Brown? It is unlikely to find one person in this area that doesn't know the story and the family hopes nobody forgets. They want answers. Thomas's family believes whatever happened that night happened at the Franck Oil gas station on 2nd Street. There was no cameras uh, actually on that, on that gas station. It would have been nice if there would have been. We would have, we would have liked to have seen what he did at the gas station, what, what possibly could have happened. What's your thought about what happened after he gassed up? I think that he was definitely um, taken by force. I don't see this as a runaway situation. I don't see it as a suicide situation. Um, if it was suicide, we would have found his body. Detectives say there was no sign of a struggle inside Thomas's truck, but a small drop of blood was found on the driver's side door. The blood uh, indicated to us that it was not fresh, uh, and it was very small, uh, as if you were to get a cut on your knuckle or finger. However, that's not what a team of private investigators believe. I hired the private investigator uh, within about five days because our sheriff was newly elected. He is young, so he, there is, you know, some inexperience. The private investigator who declined our request for an interview works separately from the sheriff, but the two share information. He believes the blood could be from a struggle. He also says a shell casing from a 25 caliber pistol was found in Thomas's truck. I don't understand why the car was returned to me within hours of Thomas going missing. Was it, in your opinion, treated like a crime scene? No. The private eye says a cadaver dog got a brief hit inside Thomas's Dodge Durango and at Lake Marvin, not far from where the SUV was abandoned. He believes Thomas is dead and that foul play is involved. It's hard to say those kind of things without evidence to back it up or support it. Do you think he's alive? I do. I have nothing, I have no evidence to support uh, the fact that he is dead. I don't. 
But if there is no evidence that something sinister happened, the family can't understand why the sheriff is going to such great lengths to keep the case concealed. I do feel like being an ongoing investigation, the, the case does not need to be open to the public. In December, when the Texas State Attorney General ruled the sheriff had to turn over evidence requested by the family, he filed a lawsuit against the Attorney General. That's all legal stuff that, that I don't have to handle. But it was the, the, the sheriff's attorneys that filed the counter lawsuit. There's, you know, comes a point to where there is a suspect, where there is criminal activity, uh, then I've got to have everything, all my ducks in a row to get that thing done and get it accomplished and push it through the, the justice system. Attorney Rosanna Abrio, who represents the Brown family, believes releasing some evidence, including all of the video showing what's believed to be Thomas's truck that night, could finally bring the family and the community some closure. We see crime videos all the time on the news or on shows, and you know maybe it'll it'll spark something with somebody. But so far, the only video the family has been able to obtain is the one from the Second Street business, which was given to them by the owner. Is it something that you would release to the media? Not at this point. Okay, even though it may lead to tips, information? We want the investigation to stay not, not public. For a mother who's been desperately trying to find her son for more than a year, that simply doesn't make sense. It seems to me that uh, it's more political than it is about a young man's life who hangs in the balance or about a family who should be able to grieve their son who is possibly not living. Sheriff Lewis says he understands her frustrations. I absolutely do. It has been hard not telling uh, the family and anybody, you know, things that, that I'd like to tell them. Uh, but uh, it's not hiding anything from them. He says the community can rest assured that the investigation is moving forward. There's so much happening. There's things we're looking at. Uh, there's things that we still have in a crime lab. There's things that we're still analyzing that's coming from Texas DPS. We want to get the piece of the puzzle that leads us to Tom Brown. One thing both teams of investigators agree on, someone in Canadian isn't telling the truth. You think someone knows something? Someone knows something. What would you say to them? Come forth. Let's get this taken care of. But until then, everyone has their own answer to one question that's on everyone's mind. Where is Thomas Brown? You believe he was murdered? Yes, I do. By someone he knew? Yes, just because of how small Canadian is. That's got to be hard to swallow. It is. It makes going home very difficult. Is your brother alive? I believe that, yes, he is alive. Held against his will, someone he doesn't want to be, a trafficking situation? It's all been through my head. Um, I don't like any of it. Do you think your son is out there? I would like to think that he is, but I, I have no idea.